there, this is Doris Spenter from Library Arts. I'm so glad you're joining me today to listen to a great read aloud of the story Hug Machine by Scott Campbell. What a delightful book it is. And this book is the inspiration for a really fun craft today. We're gonna to be creating a pillow that is inspired by the book Hug Machine. And because this book is all about giving hugs, we have a pillow with two long arms that meet together with a little bit of Velcro so that you can pretend to give hugs to yourself, to your friends, to your family, your animals, your pets, whatever you wanna do. So come along with me as we go over the materials and the steps for creating this fun craft today. Look forward to seeing you in a moment. After we read the book, we'll start the craft. Okay, so let's get started making your own hug machine pillow. Let's go over the materials you're gonna to need to make this soft, fun, squishy pillow, complete with little arms that Velcro shut, a pocket where you can tuck some fun things in, like I put a heart in mine, but you might wanna put something else, and how you're gonna make the face, stuff the pillow, and finally seal it. So I'm gonna put that finished one aside. You're going to have a pillow template, and it's already gonna have some arms and probably some Velcro already attached for you so that you can Velcro the arms shut. You can open them up just like that. You can wrap it around a stuffed animal or wrap it around yourself. It can be lots of fun to imagine what you can do with it. You're gonna need a little pocket. Now here's one that I have cut out of yellow and basically it's a square with a triangle on the bottom. And that's gonna act almost like the nose for your pocket you're going to actually want to have some eyelids that look like they're closed. So this is black felt and you can easily draw two simple arches, like almost like little rainbow arches. So you need two lines for the first one, two lines for the second one. And what I did down here with a leftover black felt, I just made some straight lines to make some little eyelashes coming off and we'll be adding those on later on. So you're going to need a pair of scissors for cutting your felt. You're going to need some glue and a craft stick for attaching some of your felt pieces, like the mouth, which I have decided to make out of purple. Very easy to make. And you're definitely going to need some stuffing, some fiber fill, which comes in a little Ziploc bag, easy to take out, and you can just pull off little pieces at a time. And you can either use a, you can use a pencil to help stuff the fiber fill inside your pillow. In fact, let's talk about that for a moment. Put the glue, the craft stick, side, the pocket. Your pillow's already been hot glued, but at the bottom there's going to be an opening. That's where you're going to want to stuff your pillow. So make sure that that is on the bottom of your pillow, not the top. And then you're going to need a couple things to hold that glued. Uh, sealed pillow shut once you have the stuffing inside. So I like to use uh, clothes pins. Uh, you can use uh, binder clips. You can use um, uh, paper clips, anything that'll just sort of hold it like this once you add the glue after the stuffings. If you just leave for like a half an hour, that glue will be nice and strong and hold your pillow shut. So I'm gonna just put those aside. And then you might even have some uh, fun dimensional paint that you might want to decorate your pillow with. I think I closed a bottle with your bag for you to use. So now that we've gone over the materials, let's go ahead and get started uh, making our own hug machine pillow. See you in a moment. Now we're going to read the book, Hug Machine by Scott Campbell. Whoa, here I come. I am the hug machine. Look at those long arms. I'm very good at hugging, the best at hugging. No one can resist my unbelievable hugging. I am the hug machine. My hugs calm people down. They cheer them up. They make them go completely nuts. I am the hug machine. I hug everything I see. Look, the fire hydrant, the bench, the mailbox. No one escapes the hug machine, even this lucky tree here. 
My hugs make the biggest feel small. Like, wow, I'm so surprised I'm getting a hug from the hug machine. The smallest feel big. That turtle feels very happy getting a hug. I hug soft things, hard things like this rock, square things like the ice cream truck, long things like that snake, because I am the hug machine. Oh, do you need a hug? I think you do. Hug accomplished. There's nothing the hug machine will not hug. Hmm. Well, what about me? I am so spiky. No one ever hugs me. Well, they are missing out. I just have to get my mittens on, my helmet, my apron, and I can give you the best hug ever. And so he does. What about me, Shirley? I'm too big for you to hug, says the ginormous whale. Hmm, says the hug machine. Of course not. See, zip, 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 not for the hug machine. You're not too big. People often ask what the hug machine eats to keep hugging energy high. Well, the answer is pizza. The hug machine likes pizza very much. Me too, by the way. Refueled and ready for action. Hug, 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 hug. Everybody's getting a hug. So, hug! He is really into hugging. Phew! What a tiring day of hugging. The hug machine is exhausted. Hug machine can hug no more, but look who's coming in to help out. Oh, why yes, you may hug the hug machine. Hug machine is always open for business. The end. What a delightful book. Well, I hope that you look for your book, this book at your library, because I think you'd enjoy it very much. It's called Hug Machine by Scott Campbell. And now on to our hug machine pillow. See you soon. And we're back. So uh, let's start by taking a little look at the pillow I made earlier. We have a little closed eyes with little tiny lashes and these are all peel and stick felt. So I have given you some black felt and remember this is peel and stick felt. So if you take a pencil and just draw a simple arch. And then I like to talk about an echo of an arch. When you echo it, you're just copying the same line a little distance away. So it's like an echo of the first arch. Then make another arch, almost like a little smiley face. So we're gonna cut those out and put them aside for just a moment. Make sure you have a nice pair of sharp scissors. This is where an adult could be helpful because felt can be a little bit difficult to cut sometimes. And you're going to put these little felt eyelids, if you will, that are closed. I'm gonna cut them out. I'm gonna give it a little trim here and a little sure it's going the right direction trim here and so that will be one of the eyelids now I'm going to cut another one out similar way I uh, notice I'm cutting on the paper side so it's easier to see what you're cutting and the cutting will go easier too if you cut on the paper side with little cuts don't cut too fast it may make it more difficult if you cut too fast so now I have two eyes, and they actually have a little extra if you make a mistake. You could even make one eye a little different from the other eye. There's no reason why they have to be exactly the same. So I'm just showing you this because this could be kind of a fun way to do it if you wanted to even like, you know, do something like that. So it looks like the eye is open and you wanna take some of your extra, you know, some of your dimensional paint 
and put a little eye like it's peeking at you. I mean, that could be a lot of fun. So just, to, just ideas to play with. That could be an eyebrow. Now, this part, I'm just going to cut a straight, straight-ish, because I didn't get very straight there, did I, line. And then all I have to do is cut these into evenly sized eyelashes. So if I just begin cutting them into little strips like this, you can see how you can get these little evenly shaped eyelashes. Use as many as you want. I don't know if I'll use all of these. I'm just gonna cut them. So now I can see how many do I have? I can just sort of start playing with it. Maybe even I want to make one looking like it's a bit open on this side. I'm going to put it on the black side so you can see. Maybe I don't want to do them like they're sleeping. Maybe I want to make it look like it's one eye's open and one eye could be closed where it's more like this. So you can have fun, you know, making this the way you want to make it. So here comes the other one. I'm gonna see if I have the same amount of lashes. Let's count. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Perfect, one left over. So you can play around with the idea to see what you like. You know, again, if you wanna use dimensional paint and draw an eye looking out here, it's really up to you. It's just a, a fun little thing to do. So, um, the way I made the eyes with that single um, arch, this is just a smaller version of the same thing. And I'm just gonna trim the edge here. And that makes a cute little mouth. But I wanna make sure I can see my nose. So I may have to raise the eyelids up. This is why I'm not gluing them down yet. I wanna get everything placed so I know where everything needs to fit before I glue anything down, okay? So I can do that. <clears throat> I can do uh, the other way with the eye. Like I said, if I wanna make it again, more like a sleeping eye, similar to the one in the book, um, you know, you can put these down, arrange them any way. And as I showed you, you can have fun, you know, imagining something a little bit different you know, there's an eye, put a circle in the middle, you decide what you want. I'm just gonna keep it a little bit simple, but I like it when people do something different from me. They don't feel like they have to do it the same way I do. So I think there's a lot of freedom. So once you get it laid out in a way that you're happy with, the first thing I would do is glue down the um, pocket. And the reason why we want to do that first is that sort of is the center of the pillow and it's going to allow us to see uh, where everything else goes. Now, your glue cup may have a little tape on it, so you may have to peel that tape off in order to get the cap off. And the reason why I did that is so that your glue uh, would not spill inside your bag. Nobody wants that. Okay. When you do your pocket, you want to only put glue on the edges like this. Whoops because you don't want the top of the pocket to be closed. You're definitely gonna want that to be open. Um, so I'm just doing a little, little blobs of glue along the edges so that the pocket does stay closed on the sides and bottom, but not along the top. It's a little gooey, but this is a nice strong glue and that's why I like to use it. So I'm gonna flip this over now that I know where the nose should be, and it should be about middle of your pillow. So try to get it as uh, centered as possible. Give it a little pit push down or tapping with your finger to get that glue to hold. And the top, again, will remain open for you to be able to tuck something fun in there later. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm gonna peel and stick these eyes down. If they do look like they're peeling up, even after the pillow is completely dry, you can use a little bit of your extra glue to get them to stick better. And I'm gonna, you can either use peel or stick felt if that's what I have in your bag, or you can just use glue like I'm going to for the mouth. And then when I come back, all this will be adhered 
and we can start talking about uh, decorating uh, the rest of your pillow. So, see you in a few minutes. Have fun putting your face together for your hug machine. Okay, welcome back. I hope that you were able to press and glue or arrange your eyelids, whether you went open and close, one up, one down, your mouth, your pocket, with remember the opening at the top. And you of course already have these beautiful little hug machine arms so that you can get that great hug. So I'm still gonna pull those arms apart right now, just so we can work on the stuffing of our hug machine. So we wanted to get that face in there first, so that then it's just easier to add stuffing and not disturb all the great stuff we have going on here. So what we're gonna do is we are now going to take the stuffing out of the bag. Now that's a big bunch of fiber fill. So actually what I would do is just take a little stuffing out of the bag, take it to the bottom of your pillow and using your hand, just start to tuck it in. Now a useful tool can be a pencil, maybe the eraser side going in. You can just sort of tuck it into the corners of your pillow design. So that's what I'm doing right now is I'm actually tucking it into the pillow using my pencil. And I wanna make sure it gets all the way over into the corners of the pillow so that I'm not missing um, parts of the pillow. You really want it to make sure that it feels fairly even. And you also wanna just be careful if you do have any glue like my, my pocket here that it's not oozing and causing problems as you're stuffing the pillow. So you want to stuff it so that it feels soft, like you might want to lay your head on it or decorate your bed with it, but you don't want to overstuff. That's not a good idea with this because if you overstuff, you will have a really hard time closing it later on. So make sure you just put enough stuffing in, but you avoid overstuffing. Again, push the stuffing to the corners of the pillow and when you think you have enough, like I think I can gently press this down. I still have some pull here. You see how it's gaping open now because of the stuffing? Well, that's why we're gonna be able to pull it in a minute. And so this is where your clothes pins, your paper clips, your um, uh, binder clips can be very helpful. So I'm just gonna take a little bit of this glue again that we used earlier got a little piece of paper in there right now. And I'm gonna scoop some up. Very carefully, you're gonna blob it down on a little on the thick side, right inside that hole on one side, flip your pillow over, and on the other side where they're gonna meet up, also put a nice thick layer of glue. This way, the glue is going to meet up, it's all gooey right now, evenly, because you're gonna press those two edges together. Be Watch it, I just got some glue on the back of my pillow, so be careful of that so you don't get too much ooziness. And now, perfect time to add the little clothespins, paper clips, whatever you need to hold that pillow shut. It's a temporary fix. Now, see my little mouth is coming up. That tells me I need to put a little bit more glue on that part of the pillow design. The glue will dry clear. Now, again, these are peel and stick because they're a little tricky to cut, but if they, for some reason, peel up, just we'll use a little glue to hold them down. So, that is a really cute hug machine pillow. So let's talk about some little things we can add on top of it in the next video. See you in a minute. Okay, so your pillow is stuffed. You have the um, holders, maybe clothespins, maybe uh, paper clips. Whatever you're, you're, you're using is fine to hold uh, your pillow closed. Now, if you want to add something fun, you could take some scrap felt, put a little heart in there to suggest you know, it's a little um, heart pillow. You could tuck a little, you know, animal in there. You know, it's really a great idea is just to take a little piece of paper. Here's some just simple white paper. Cut 
some paper, a little corner of it out, write a little message. You know, um, I love my cat. And then you could put your cat's name and then you could just roll it up and just put special messages in the pocket like that to be found by people. Uh, you can also have a lot of fun with some dimensional paint. So dimensional paint is 3D shiny paint. I always recommend that people um, you know, take a little scrap paper and practice to see how they can control the line because you don't want to smear that paint because it is raised and it could make a mess. So when you're doing this, two things. Leave the arms spread apart. And this is just an optional thing you could always do. You might want to say, add um, some circly cheek shapes here. So maybe I'm gonna draw a couple uh, circles for cheeks. And maybe with some extra, uh, maybe I'll put a heart on my pillow shape. Cause this is a hug machine after all. So it's gonna be uh, really sweet. Maybe I wanna put um, some additional hearts on the pillow just for fun. But once you add that paint, you're gonna wanna let it sit overnight with nobody touching it because you really don't want to have smeared paint on your pillow. So if you have a pet in the house, if you have a younger sibling, you wanna make sure they stay away and do not touch your hug machine pillow because you wanna make sure it dries completely before they can do anything to it. So I'm gonna put some fun little lines in here just jazzing it up a little bit like that. And maybe another little heart down here like that. And once you get what you want, like I've added some hearts, some little fun lines. I did make a little mistake there, but eh, I can live with it. You have to kind of give yourself a break when you don't get perfection the first time. And I'm gonna put it aside to dry and that will end up with you having a really fun pillow design like you see here that you can use to retell the story, share it with your friends, maybe give mom a special message for Mother's Day inside the pocket or dad, and maybe you wanna wrap it around yourself with that Velcro or put it around your pet or or tell a story, or put your favorite book in the arms, whatever you wanna do, and maybe even decorate your bed. So this is Doris Venter of Library Arts. I hope you enjoyed the hug machine pillow that we made inspired by the wonderful book by Scott Campbell, Hug Machine. And I hope that in the meantime, you stay well, you stay creative, and I hope to see you again soon. Take care.